What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode. And before we kick off this episode, I wanted to introduce it a little bit because this was a guest that I had and we had a great conversation, not only about leadership, but about self-awareness, about the importance of emotional intelligence, the importance of really understanding how we show up in the world, utilizing great psychometric tools, and how it really transformed us as leaders, not just as self-leaders, right? Because we have to be able to lead ourselves first, but also leaders in the household, leaders in organizations, leaders in our business. So make sure, as always, you grab your notepad, your note-taking material, because this is is going to be a very, very great conversation. And I love having guests because they are able to give you different perspectives and information that helps take you to the next level, especially the piece about generational leadership and understanding how to navigate a room where there are different generations are trying to understand each other. So of course, get your notepads, your note-taking materials, get plugged in and let's get into today's message. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Leader Set Trends podcast. And I'm really excited, okay, because I was in this person's DMs. I surely did. I was, <laughs> it went down in the DM. And it was through an Instagram ad that I saw this. And the thing is, as you all have heard, I am big on psychometric tools and assessments. And I saw that the disc was correlated in what we did. I was looking on their page and saw what they were doing and I loved everything about it. So I was like, you know what? I want to get you on my podcast. We need to have a conversation. And that conversation ended up, um, ended to a phone call and the phone call was amazing. And it just was a, a, just a beautiful conversation. I just thought it was important that we brought this conversation on the podcast. So I'm super excited and honored to have Miss Stacy on today's episode. And let me tell you about, I'm going to brag about you a little bit. All right. President, <laughs> Presidente, okay. <laughs> um, of a leadership resource. That just means the bug stops with me. That's <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, of leadership resources and consulting LLC. It is a consulting firm in Austin, Texas. I love Austin. It's really nice if you guys have never been. Has more than 30 years experience in helping organizations use assessments to effectively meet their human capital needs. Stacy has worked with Fortune 500 corporations, nonprofits, government agencies, educational institutions, and small businesses throughout the United States and internationally to help employees and managers learn their behavior skills and emotional intelligence skills, right? Build those for all those needed to communicate more effectively in a wide range of applications as such as management, development, team building, sales, training, and more. So welcome, Stacey. Thank you so much for joining us on the Leader Set Trends podcast. How are you today? I am great. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be on your podcast and have this yes. conversation. <laughs> yes, yes. Again, just, just really excited to have you on here. Again, the conversation that we had was just so rich. Um, we could have talked all day, but I know you had to get back to work and just change the world as you've been doing. Um, well, first of all, before we get into this first question, 30 years. Yeah. Like, how does it feel to say, you know what? I have been impacting the masses for 30 years. How does that feel I've been like? impacting the masses <laughs> for 30 years. I will say yeah. I've been in this industry. You know, this is my only job. This was my first job right out of college and um, had my degree actually in computer science. I don't know if you and I talked about that. And so the previous owner of the consulting firm reached out to me from my wedding announcement that was in the local newspaper and saw that I was a graduate of Baylor University with a degree in computer science and they needed help, you know, 30 years ago, back in the days of DOS as the operating system connecting, you know, a database. And so it was going to be a three week project that turned into 30 years. Like, I mean, it'll be 30 years next month, but I'm going to claim that 30 years. Um, so that project, you know, expanded and now it's a passion of mine. And now I own the company. So 12 years ago, I bought the business and from my mentor. And so, yeah, I've been on this journey of self-discovery and a lot of transition over those 30 years. So I don't know about impacting the masses. I think I was, you know, being impacted the most by my mentor, but he saw something in me early on and began to train me. And so, yeah, hence the journey of the 30 years. So thank you. Oh, wow. Wow. So, <laughs> so when did you decide, you know, what computer science 
is what I pursued. But you know what? Let me make a hard pivot <laughs> and hard focus pivot. on, again, transforming these organizations, leaders, teams. Like how, when yeah. were you like, you know what? I made a mistake. So well, I wouldn't even say made a mistake. Yeah, true, 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 true. So I'd say it was probably my junior year in college. I realized I had spent way too much of mom and dad's money. And I wasn't going to change course, but because I'm a people person, I love people. I can program. I love math and science. Now I'm giving away my age. That was 30 years ago. So this is the late eighties, early nineties. I was the one of four females in the whole department, the computer science engineering department at Baylor at the time. And so I knew that, you know, I'm going into this male dominated field. I love math and science. I can do it. I can speak the language. But after two years, I realized I'm not a programmer. I cannot stay in that lab all night with these, you know, nerds, honestly, that love doing this stuff. I mean, I could speak the language. And by my junior year, we were doing team projects. And so I began to see a shift there of, hey, I can speak the language. I could interface. There must be some kind of niche for me to be able to work in this market, but do something different than programming. And so, yeah, then I became the person that was chosen first on all of our team projects to do the presentations, to put together all the things because they didn't want to present. They wanted to spend the all-nighters in the lab. I would come in the last week they would explain it all to me. I understood. And then I'd get up and do the presentation. So that's kind of what I thought I was going to do. But we were moving to Palestine, which is small East Texas. Um, I was engaged to um, my husband and uh, we were, uh, we dated, you know, six years, high school sweethearts, moving back to our same small town. So I kind of thought I'd have to drive 45 minutes to an hour, maybe to get a job in my field. So when this offer kind of fell in my lap, I explored it because I thought, now this is interesting. So I was managing their network. You know, this was back when there was a server, you know, an actual, not the cloud. This was a server pre-internet days. There was a server, a network of computers. So I did the tech piece for this small firm, but then the owner saw something in me as well, started mentoring me, training me, taking me around to clients, doing consulting. And I got super fascinated by DISC, by behavioral styles, by communication, by all these ways that people are wired differently. And yeah, that started my journey. So started with DISC, communication, and then EQ came along later. So. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. Wow. It's, it's so interesting how we'll go into one thing and make a hard pivot. Um, you know, I know like faith is something that's in both important to both of us. So it's like, God, will, and, it, and it's beautiful, right? It's like, sometimes it's like, God, okay. All right. It's all a part of the journey. And he'll be like, mm, this is where you should be. Yes. All right. And you'll end up in right where you should be. Um, so I love that. Um, and even, you know, the leaders that will come along that, that journey and say, you know what, I see something in you and they will walk us through, um, that journey, um, of developing and growing into those gifts. Right. Um, because clearly you were a people person, clearly you had the presentation skills and you had like a gift within you and you were able to develop that. And now, um, you're able to do that, you know, and, and love it. And it doesn't feel like work. Right. Um, so let, let's ask that first question. Um, what does leadership mean to you? What does that look like for you? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I've studied this for 30 years. I love some of the big thought leaders out there, Brene Brown, Simon Sinek, you know, I've read all of their things. And I think Simon Sinek's definition of leadership really resonates with me the most. And it's kind of that servant leader. It is all about preferring others, really putting other people's needs before myself and raising up the next generation of leaders. And so that's really what I'm all about is you know, I think we all influence every single one of us, whether we, you know, are influencing in the home or influencing at work, whether it's a team of thousands or, a, you know, that little infant that's, <laughs> that you're um, caring for, we're leading and we're influencing others. And it really is about um, putting their needs before our own, really working through the issues and raising up people. I think um, Simon Sinek says it's not about, uh, being the boss of others, but really being the steward of, you know, that team and making sure that the people you're not in charge of them, but the people that you have charge of that you're really leading out that way. So that's beautiful. Beautiful. Again, that that's why I started, um, you know, I, I really got into this business. It was about, okay, 
I recognize that there was a gap that I was seeing because again, I was, I was referring to my, this new generation of, you know, leaders that were coming in as kids. I recognized that there were some breakdowns and things that I were, wasn't understanding. And I'm a millennial and I call myself an elder millennial because again, I was in like that time where the internet just happened um, and all these changes were happening. But also like, again, I could connect with the Gen Zers and now they call them the next generation uh, generation after them is Gen A, but yeah. I can connect with them. But I also could connect with like the generation prior to me because again, I saw the change. Like I know what it's like without internet. I know what it's like with internet. So um, when I joined the U.S. Air Force, I came in during the culture was so different. It was like, get it done. It wasn't about emotions, right? And again, um, emotional literacy is so important because again, we all have emotions. We just, again, show it, show them, express them differently. Uh And um, it was about, you know, you do as I say, period. Okay. You, You get it done. I don't want to hear anything else about it. But then I saw that even the structure and the workplace and the mindset of the military started to change and they recognize, okay, we need to soften up. We need to recognize that mental health is important, that we need to start navigating how we communicate differently. So you had this generation come in and I'm like, do as I say. And they're like, you're mean. Why do you talk to us like that? We don't like you. And I'm like, I don't care. Do as I say. And I saw productivity start to plummet and I started that they didn't like me. And again, when all that is happening and you're trying to lead a team, yes, I have all the awards. Yes, I have all these things, but I need to make sure I maintain that cohesion. So I had to change. And then again, I was still in those conversations with other leaders that were like, those kids and these, this and this, that. And I'm like, I have to bridge this. So I love um, what you were saying about being a steward. And also again, um, being able to be that bridge between the generation um, and really, again, supporting, you know, the differences that we see, because there's so many differences within organizations and teams and just being that person to be like, OK, let's bring these differences together and use that to, you know, towards this mission, to this mm-hmm. goal. I call it a mission and the vision and so on. So love it. Like, let's take it back. Let's take it back. Right. Okay. So as you were being introduced to these tools, the disc, emotional intelligence, what is your self-awareness EQ story? When did you say, you know what, I need to step my self-awareness game up. I need to improve that. Um, and this was a part of the conversation we had on the phone um, where you were like, you know what, I need to improve in this area because yeah. it's going to support me in this area. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I didn't mention this, but I do have three grown children. And so it was when my youngest honestly was in entering school that we began to see some just differences in learning with her. And I knew something was different because I have three kids, right? And the other two were reading and she was really struggling. And so through her kind of journey of her learning issues, we you know, finally realized she was dyslexic. It just started me on this journey of brain, the brain, just learning about the brain. I wanted to learn everything I could to help her. And then, you know, also she was frustrated and I was frustrated in that. And we weren't our best selves showing up to help each other through that, you know, and then she's five, you know, six years old as well. So they've got little attitudes to all their own things. And so, yeah, I think that's really when I started learning more and realizing how my emotions were impacting her. It's sometimes in a positive way, many times in a negative way. And then she would spiral and circle and could not, we called it this loop. She could not get out of it. And so it really was helping my daughter, honestly, that I, that my self-awareness with emotions began that journey of just increasing self-awareness. Because like I mentioned, I love assessments. I love DISC. The organization that um, I partner with, they had an EQ assessment at the time too. And so I was like, oh, self-awareness is the first part of EQ. Let me take this, you know? And so I love assessments. I love learning about myself. I love feedback. I love, you know, um, we used to do a lot of 360 assessments back in the day and those are kind of coming back around. And so anyway, all that I think was really that piece that started that discovery piece in me of self-awareness. Wow. And, and, and again, and that's why it's so powerful because again, I always say on here that 
we are leading in so many different capacities. We first have to be able to lead ourselves. And then we're not only just leading within the positions we hold, but we're leading in the household as, yeah. as well. So it's it's this idea of, you know, again, we go into the workplace and they're like separate business, you know, separate business and personal. But the reality is it does follow you in the workplace. So real quick, you know, before you started to work through that, like how was it affecting you in the workplace? Because again, I um, am someone that is, you know, again, my son, you know, he's eight years old and he's doing amazing, but there was a season when same thing, I noticed that there were some um, breakdowns and through assessing and like some ups and downs, you know, we recognize like ADHD was something he was navigating and it was hard. And I had to recognize, I had to grow and develop and work on my self-awareness and how I was responding in my emotions. And it's so beautiful how our children will oh, make yeah. us be like, okay, I need to work on myself. Right. <clears throat> and it did follow me in the workplace. Yeah. I not only had to go to a ton of appointments um, and had to navigate that stress, but you know, being up late at night or getting a bunch of phone calls from uh, from the schoolhouse and having to pick him up and having to navigate all that and navigating a supervisor or a leader or a manager that didn't understand. It was a lot. So while, you know, this idea is separated, it's kind of difficult, you know? So how was it for you? And what do you think about this idea of separate the personal and the professional? Can it be done. Good luck. I mean, I've been trying for 30 years, but it, you know, I mean, we're human, right? And we take all of that with us wherever we go. And especially as moms. I mean, I know for me, I had this career that I loved. I have these children that I love that are my first priority. Honestly, my family has always come first. And, uh, and so navigating that has been challenging at times. There are days that I did really well and the days that I did not. And I think when I saw it affecting work, because we can't separate, honestly, we're humans with real emotions that are deep. You know, some of those were really deep. And then when I started even sharing kind of what I was going through with others at work and being real with those emotions, I found out, you know, I'm not the only one. So you mentioned ADHD. My daughter also had that diagnosis. And so, you know, those, there's a lot that goes with that. We were, you know, trying the one thing with dyslexia and getting her into special programs. Anyway, all of that to say, when I started connecting with other women at, of, man, this is going on at home and this is a struggle. And then they're sharing resources with me and even groups, you know, like in our elementary school and just different things. And I was like, we need each other. You know, we need to lean into the wisdom that we have in each other because there's so much we can learn from one another we don't have to do this alone. And when I started really doing that, I saw a difference. And then I could even share it with my clients. That's what was fascinating. I'll never forget a phone call I got from a woman and she was just in tears. And she's calling me about her son, not about work. I mean, we've got a huge project that we're working on at work. And all we talked about for 30 minutes was her son. And um, just, she was asking me so many things like, have, do, have you done this? What did you do with this happen? You know, and just being able to share those real things that affect us um, as women leaders, I think it's super connecting and helpful. So yeah, that's kind of one of those. That's wonderful. I mean, you really just explained and we just saw an example of like developing again, their self-leadership you recognize, okay, I need to work in and develop in this area of self-awareness, right? Lead myself, develop myself. And then you saw again, that family component. I need to, you know, I know how it's going to benefit my family. And then now is that community aspect. Now the information I've learned, I can share it with others. And then you have others, right? Those within the community that was able to share information with you. And, and now it's just turned into like, like everyone is just supporting each other. Um, so what, what is your, like, what is your um, thoughts on, or why do you think there's an importance of, of course, leaders sharing that information, but of course, community leadership, right? Because again, we're not just leaders in, again, within the workplace, you have family leadership and also in the community. I know you do some great things in the community as well. Yeah. And um, you can take the knowledge and the information and the skills that you have and now utilize it in those community activities and those leadership roles that you have in the community as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been, when my kids were in school, I was that mom, you know, I was like, I want to be involved. I want to be, you know, that I was actually the PTA president. Can you believe this? My kids went to school at PS26 in New York City in Queens when we were little and this girl was the PTA president because I'm like 
my kids have never been in public school. Now we're in New York City because we moved from New York. I mean, from Texas, small East Texas to New York City. And so I thought I got I to be really involved and I need to know all the things. And so, yeah, but I was able to take all of that knowledge into that diverse community and really help with communication, emotions, you know, all the things as I was learning uh, in that season too, right alongside my children. But it really did work, you know, in community groups. I've, you know, my daughters danced. I was there on their dance team. I was also the... Um, dance team president, you know, the booster club president, you know, I've done so. so you just run to leadership. You know, my husband's like, really, really? Now you're going to be that? I'm like, you know, they said it wasn't that much time. He's like, they lied. <laughs> it's going to be so much time, but I will never trade it. I mean, it was, you know, you only, you don't get those moments back with your kids. They grow up so fast. And those are some of my best memories on some of those volunteer teams, organizations. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So in leaders out there, you know, do you have that community? Like, do you have those connections? Right. Because maybe you're like, oh, you know what? I don't want to be in those roles and that's OK. But the power of having community outside is so beneficial. Right. Because maybe you can't find it on the inside. Um, so um, there, so I have um, they're considered they call chiefs. Right. So my boss right within my military organization, her rank is chief. Um, so she says how like lonely it is at the top. So a lot of her community is on the outside. So a lot of the connections she has to make is, you know, people on the outside and having that support system, because again, it can, you know, as you move up the chain, a lot of people are like, I don't want to talk to you as much <laughs> because you're in that position. Right. And they're like, I don't know if I can trust you. And that's why it's so beneficial to have that community support and have those other channels that you can lean on for support because it is tough. You, you do sometimes need that additional support and you never know what kind of resource um, and information, you know, that neighbor, that friend, you know, that dance coach, that PTA <laughs> leader could have that could really benefit you as well. So it, it's so powerful um, how that could be um, a, a tool or, yeah. or an, something that could be, again, utilized for that level of support, because again, you don't have to do it alone. And I see a lot of leaders that are struggling because they want to do it alone. Yeah. And have you seen that? Have you seen clients navigate with, man, it's lonely at the top. I wish I had additional support. What would you tell a leader out there that's saying it's lonely at the top? What do I do? Yeah. Stacy? <laughs> yes. Find some mastermind groups or, you know, other colleagues. There's a lot of organizations out there. I know I'm a part of one. In fact, I was supposed to be in Phoenix with a group of colleagues of women that live all over the country and we rented an Airbnb together and then, you know, COVID canceled it all. So I'm able to be here with you tonight, but yeah, I was going to be in Phoenix and not, uh, so my calendar totally opened up. Thank you, Omicron. So, um, but I was so looking forward to that because we meet monthly on a Zoom call, you know, but we used to get together annually at this conference and um, it's, it's a lifesaver, honestly, to be able to, you know, vent at times at people that have no connection to the people that you're, you know, talking to, and then just get feedback of, Hey, how would you do this? Because, you know, we all have blind spots. That's one thing in self-awareness. Someone told me one time years ago, I have never seen the back of my head. Have you thought about that? It requires a mirror for me to, I will never see the back of my head. I need a mirror to see it. And so that's where feedback comes in. That's where people speaking into our lives as leaders can give us feedback. Kind of like that mirror, you know, when we're checking <laughs> the back of the head, it helps. They can point out, you know, the holes. They can point out, you know, it's looking really good. You're doing a great job or you need to grow in this area. And so, yeah, I was on a call earlier today and yesterday just getting some, you know, advice from someone in my industry of like, hey, I came up across this situation, you know, how would you handle it? And that's just, I think that being a lifelong leader, someone that wants to continually grow, um, that's another way to develop awareness is through feedback. I love that. And that's important, right? Because we're not perfect. Okay. No. We are not perfect. No, we are not. <laughs> No, <laughs> we need to be in that constant state of growth. Again, like I have this idea of becoming like I read the M Michelle Obama book. Um, I'm in this book club and I was like, let me join this book club. I want to get around different women. Yeah. Right. And the beautiful thing is it's a di diverse group of women and we're reading 
a Brene Brown book. Um, it's like the heart of, I can't think of the name, but it's beautiful, right? Because it's really, oh my gosh, you need to read this book. I need to, I'm, I'm going okay, I I to, I love her. I read, Jerry because, yeah, I've read several of her. So, yeah. oh my goodness. It's like emotion. It's emotional intelligence on steroids, but we're oh. really going through um, these definitions of these emotions and you're learning about emotions from a different perspective. I'm going to pivot real quick. Okay. So n- nostalgia. So nostalgia, I didn't even know this. Nostalgia was something that came from something way, way back. I don't know the time I'm thinking like in the Uh twenties. And the reason why um, nostalgia was named nostalgia is I think it's like Greek or something, but it was like a mental hospital, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's called nostalgia, nostalgia is I think it's like the NOS means one thing and nostalgia means another thing. But What happened is that people um, that were in this location, they started to yearn to go home. Like they yearned it to the point where they started to have these like psychotic episodes where they would start to like get sick. They started to see the people. They started to envision it. And then I think the NOS means um, like um, something related to missing home and nostalgia means something about being away. So they merged the word kind of being like, it was correlated to people like missing mm-hmm. how like this, the past missing home, missing where they were. And that's what <laughs> developed the word nostalgia. And I was like, that is so fascinating. That is. that is what it meant. So it was really explaining that, you know, sometimes we get into these states where, um, you know, these states of nostalgia, but you know, you're missing how things were, but you might be missing some key points of like, um, Maybe yeah, you're missing like this phase of that relationship or this job or this situation, but you're forgetting that the reason why you have to make a pivot because it was unhealthy or um, you're missing these key opportunities of growth that you needed because, yes, you missed this one piece, but there was this that was um, unhealthy, this that was unhealthy, this that needed to be de- developed, this that needed to be developed. So, yes, you had that one good moment, but there were other things that uh-huh. you needed to develop or other reasons why you had to pivot from that situation. So it's so interesting how you're starting to learn about these terms, these emotions from yeah. a different perspective and well, you hear and, about the historical background. Yeah. And I love that even just how our brains work and how memory is stored and how emotions are stored. I mean, we store emotion in our bodies. And so depending on, you know, what that situation circumstance was, we have a memory, you know, that will evoke, I can smell certain scents and it takes me right back to my grandmother's house. Like there are things that I'm just like, Oh, I'm right back there. And it's just, it blows my mind. You know, our brains are so powerful and they can bring to to memory something from a smell or a, you know, a scent or a, a touch, you know, even physical touch or a sound, all those things, but it's stored. Yeah. All the memories. It is. is. It's like, we've been going through these chapters and it's just uncovering so much. So amazing book. Um, so yeah, so, (laughs) so, so, so good stuff. And so now let's take it into, so we've gone through the family aspect, the community aspect. So now let's take it into like the area of expertise, because, you know, we have 30 years of all this great experience. And one of the things that I talked about, you know, about some areas to focus on in 2022, that companies and organizations and institutions need to look at. So as far as what you have seen, what would you say some companies are struggling with and while, why, excuse me, self-awareness, um, emotional intelligence, and the disc, right? Because everybody has their views of these different things. But what do you think companies are struggling with and why they need to incorporate this, especially during this time, you know, yeah. where you have, um, um, excuse me, um, LinkedIn did this study and they talked about um, employee well-being and how right now work-life balance has been uh, uh, important. Like a lot of individuals are like, listen, being in that environment of, you know, shutdown where we were home and people had to be with themselves Mm -hmm. because I believe, again, we're on autopilot so much. We never really take pause, take that moment to pause and just be with self. And when COVID initially hit and we had that time frame where we were home and people had to face themselves, it shook up a lot of people. So now when people went back to the workplace, they didn't want to return to how things were before. There, Some people quit. You know, they're coining um, this season as a great resignation. You know, there are individuals that were like, listen, I don't want to go back to how things were yeah. because 
I had this, you know, epiphany. I had these moments of self-awareness. I recognized I wasn't showing up for my family, for my children, for myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, you know, do things like how I was doing it before. Um, so I think there's just like a level of a, a, a yearning for awareness by team members, leaders, and so on. But what are you seeing that's happening within companies right now as far as the need or they should need or they yeah. want the self-awareness yeah. embedded within um, what they're what they're doing? Well, I think a couple of things. First of all, there's so much transition. I mean, you mentioned the 40%, you know, great resignation, but not only that, but companies are then also going through so much transition. Some of the big companies that I work for with are, you know, having huge, you know, turnover, not just from that, but they've also, you know, terminated people. And so transition is huge and people don't know each other. I mean, and now we're putting them in a virtual format or a hybrid team. Some are back in the office, some are not. And so there's just such a need for learning how to communicate and emotions are raw right now more than ever. And I think what I've seen, and this even happened pre COVID, but I'd say in the last 10 years, I've seen an increase in organizations realizing that emotions matter and that emotions impact decision-making that emotions are all about, you know, affecting productivity, collaboration. And so we've got to address it. We've got to really help our leaders learn how, because, you know, you can have a really direct dominant, you know, that high D leader, but if they have a lot of self-awareness and a lot of, high, you know, high EQ, they can be extremely effective. But that same direct dominant leader with really low EQ, it's maddening, right? And so that was happening pre-COVID. And I'd say the last two years have just heightened everything because of, you know, we're burnt out, we're, we're, we're tired. I mean, I'm working in some healthcare. I was supposed to do some sessions last week and had to pivot last minute because, you know, they're all, you know, they've got caseloads that are over the top and, you know, just really, and they're like, can we push this back week? I'm like, is a week enough? Yes, we can. I can't even imagine. I mean, I was on a call. This was back in the summer. So summer 2021 with a healthcare um, organization in Southern California. And they had like 30 of their leaders on and the CEO came on the Zoom call just to announce that they could work from home. Now they're going, you know, they're on the front lines, work from home one day a week. There were tears. This wasn't you get a day off. This was you get to just work from home. And I thought, wow. I, I mean, we, I don't even have words for some of the things that they're doing and seeing and living through. And so, yeah, I'd say in healthcare, it's one thing. And then across the board, emotions are at the surface of everything because of this pandemic. And so it's so important that we're talking about them, how they're impacting our decision-making how they're impacting our ability to collaborate with others and lead because it's it's a big differentiating factor. Empathy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Leaders without empathy. I do, I teach a ton of emotional intelligence virtual training. And so I've been doing it um, for this one particular organization. I've done eight of them in the last two months. And I've got many more scheduled. It's a global company. And it's fascinating to hear them because I do an exercise, you know, tell me, you know, a bad boss that you've worked with or a bad leader. And I ask their, you know, how, what they did and how it made them feel. And then I'll switch it and say, okay, now tell me about your best, you know, leader you've ever worked for. And it's all about, you know, no respect. They took all the credit. They, they didn't listen. All these things it made me feel like they didn't value me. Like it was just about what I did, not who I am as a person. Whereas a leader with high EQ was like, oh, I felt valued. I felt trusted. There was, they wanted to develop me as a leader. I wanted to show up. I wanted to be a part of the team. I actually wanted to um, collaborate more and all the things, you know, just because they showed interest and listened and had empathy and all those things. So yeah, it's, it's been fascinating. Just this one organization these last couple of months listening to the, to the teams. That's so good. And, and I've noticed that too, like, wow, there, there are companies that are actually hiring me for, 
you want to talk about stress management mm-hmm. and emotions? I'm like, amazing. And one of the things I like to do as well is take it all the way back to how we learned about emotions, because the way we learned about it was so- Wait a second, just had to take a quick pause because I wanted to check in with you. Has the information you received on this podcast, on the series of podcasts, or even the information that I provide right here, is it been beneficial to you in any way? And are you like, you know what? That's an area that is a blind spot, an area that I need to work on. It's something that I really need to pay attention to. Well, I want you to take a minute and do what? Schedule a consultation. Let's get you to that next level because as leaders, the more growth and development that, that we invest within ourselves, it reaps benefits within our teams, within our organization, and ultimately is going to support that big mission that we have. Because remember, like I always say, individuals don't typically quit the organization, they typically quit the leader, they typically quit the culture. And if we want to be change makers, we want to be leaders who set trends, we have to grow and develop. So make sure you connect with me. You can email me at info at aishathomas.org or you can go to my website aishathomas.org a-i-s-h-a-t-h-o-m-a-s dot org and schedule a consultation so we can get you to the level where people want to be connected to you versus move away so go do it now don't wait any longer schedule that consultation now talk to you soon the way we learned about it was so ineffective. I mean, again, all of us, right? And again, it's no fault of our family, our community members, because again, they're just, you know, it's the information they learn. And it's so fascinating to hear, to have those conversations. They're like, listen, um, you know, and it's in this Brene Brown's book. And I'm like, okay, I'm in alignment because, you know, I talk about those three emotions that we learn, those when we're given that feedback on the way out from those airport bathrooms, the happy, you know, basic face and um, that face. And that's really how, you know, the tendencies of expressing emotions and not recognizing, you know, the tears of it and recognizing how emotions do shape our, um, our responses, our actions, right? There's the event that's happening. And then there's the nervous system, right? There's those internal activities that are happening that we're not even aware of. And then there's the response, right? There are all these things happening and we're in, um, I was in this training a couple of weeks ago and someone was someone as a, a high C, right? So this is the quality control, which is myself. So even though I show up right now and you guys think I'm a high I and you're like, she's a people person. I'm actually a uh, high, I'm not high D. I'm a high, no, I am a high D, but I'm more high C. I'm a high CD. Um, But again, I've mastered, I won't say mastered. I don't like to say that, you know, I know myself and I know what I need to tap into um, at the right time to reach the goal that's necessary. So I can't be on here and say, Hello, guys. I am Aisha Thomas, and well, I have you know you got to bring some energy, right? So you need to tap into. You'll be exhausted, right? When we're out, when this is over, you're going to be done, and I'm like, this is amazing. I know. Yeah, because I'm so tired. tired after this. But again, I know it's necessary. Even when I train, I was like, I want to do this. I want to develop, right? Because I know intrinsically, I'm a high altruist. I love to serve, but I'm tired after it. I'm exhausted. Um, but I know I need to tap into it, but again, this high C someone that's quality control, very structured, very, you know, um, you know, checks and balances. They were like, I'm not emotional. And, and I'm like, let's check that. Right. You are, are you human? It's just, are you human? Exactly. You're emotional. Exactly. <laughs> right. And again, it's just even understanding how my sad might look one way and your sad might look another way. Your happy might be like, ah, and my happy might be like. Yeah, I'm still happy. Right. And just even expression, right. How we express it. And that's the power of understanding EQ and having self-awareness. And I was going to ask you uh, a question because you, you were saying that, you know, um, individuals go back to the workplace and they don't know each other. And I was going to ask you because a lot of people might be like, why do I need to know? Why should I care about knowing who I work with? Mm -hmm. Why do individuals need to know or even care to know who they work with, especially leaders, but even team members. Why is that important to know the person next to you? We were wired for connection. I mean, that's how we're made. We're humans. We're wired for connection. And so 
to just sit at home, you know, yeah, you can do that. And I even said at the beginning of COVID, I did these little videos, you know, of all the disc styles. I was like, the D's are frustrated because all productivity just stopped and we can't move things forward. The eyes are like, I just want to hug people and I just need to touch somebody and somebody come, you know, bye, let me just talk to you. And the S's were like, oh, finally rest. I'm going to rest. And this, I've been waiting for this day. And the seeds were like, good time alone. Yeah. Six feet. Okay, good. I, three feet was my buffer, but now six feet is even better. Do not get in my personal space. You know, all the things. <laughs> yes. But then I think all of us, every single style, the longer this has gone on, it's just like, mm -mm, this is not working anymore. This is not working. The stress levels have just increase so much more and we just don't have that margin that we used to have to kind of flex our style so we're showing up sometimes and we're not our best selves we're not the emotions are we're saying things just flippantly off the cuff and then it's like oh i need to pull that back but it's already out there and you can't pull that back and so yeah <laughs> it's uh it's interesting it's definitely interesting to see styles with eq and how it all works together and it's fascinating and we can learn that's here's the thing i love about eq Aisha, is that it's not like iq where it's set in stone eq can be developed at any stage of our lives at any stage of development we can learn how to increase i mean i i feel like i'm a lifelong learner i've always said that about myself and i'm always learning new things i love learning new things and then when something kind of pops up i'm like oh i kind of thought i would do better than that yeah, that, that, that didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out. And I am being triggered in some kind of way right now because of X, Y, Z, you know, just fill in the blank any given day, whatever it is. And so I can't even imagine having young children, you know, navigating Zoom school and all the things that moms are doing these days and homeschool and all the things, you know, my baby is in college. And so she chose to not go to class. I mean, not go to school last year. I mean, she took, that was her decision to take a gap year and we supported that. But goodness, I thought, oh, how hard it is. I mean, I've had, I've been training, you know, doing virtual training whether it's EQ or DISC and, you know, school would be closed that morning back. This was back, you know, when things were changing every day and I'd have, you know, dads on the call, literally laptop in the kitchen, cooking breakfast, you know, got the infant. I'm like, dude, you, you don't have to have your camera on. <laughs> like, you just take care of your kid. Don't burn anybody. Don't hurt anyone. All the things. But I really do feel for so much of the workforce right now that is, you know, schooling from home, all the, all the things that we're having to do now that were not our norm. And I think that also is just shrinking our margins, increasing those, you know, levels of emotion and it's coming out at times, not in a great way. So. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, it, it's, it, it's been interesting again, having to um, that first experience, like I, I haven't, I had to break the cycle of going to bed at midnight. Cause again, I had to find a rhythm mm -hmm. and it was awkward that your household became your workspace and the, your, you know, you became, yeah. you know, mom, teacher, you counsel, it became everything. And it was so interesting. So it, it, it did change the dynamic. And again, now going back into the workforce and it's like, you, you know, so many different things that individuals are navigating. So I can see why the need and the yearning for this information is there. Um, and, and it's so, it's so important um, that organizations are incorporating this in mm -hmm. their, you know, again, making this a part of their training and making yeah. this something that they want their team members to have because it is so beneficial. And I love that you brought up the guys, the fellas, the men, yes. how has it been, how has it been received <laughs> really talking about emotions yeah. with the fellas, because, yes. you know, us ladies love talking about emotions. We do that. We'll cry to our girlfriends mm -hmm. and talk to them about what we're navigating and so on. But how has it been discussing emotions with our 
men, oh. our male leaders that yeah. are out there. They're like emotions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I've, you know, back when we were all in person doing training pre COVID, I had more pushback, I think, than I've had in the last two years on a virtual training. So that was interesting to me just to kind of pause and think about that. But I'd have people come in, you know, be like, eh, touchy feely. I don't, you know, all the stuff. And so I began to just pivot instead of talking about what you're feeling, I would just say, what are you experiencing right now? And they can answer that question. Same thing. I'm asking the same question, but it's just a slight shift. And so when I began to change some of my language, I realized the engagement of men in my training sessions began to just, they were flourishing. They're, they're all of a sudden talking. And then they realized, oh my God, I'm talking about, I'm talking about my feelings. You know, I didn't mean to do that. Um, but so I'd say previously I, I saw some pushback, but I am so surprised. And especially just, I've done so many virtual sessions um, over, you know, the past. And I'm talking from I've got participants from the globe. I mean, I'm I'm doing all kinds of crazy hours of these virtual calls. So I'll have some that are mostly like China, Asia. I've got people from Dubai, Australia, um, the UK, you name it. I mean, every culture. And so, you know, sometimes I'm like, can y'all understand this girl from Texas? <laughs> No one has their cameras on at times and I'm trying to engage with them. I'm like, please come off mute and talk to me because I need to hear. Um, and that has been really interesting because I will tell you, emotions are universal <laughs> around the globe. We have really great leaders and we have some really poor leaders. And when we're just talking about self-awareness and I also talk about self-regulation, which is regulating those disruptive emotions. We talk about motivation. We talk about social awareness. So understanding the emotions of the team and how it's impacting. And then social regulation, which is kind of more um, networking and being able to negotiate, you know, but all about emotions. And it is some really interesting conversations that the men have really been leading out on um, in ways that I haven't seen previously, um, pre COVID. So, wow. So uh, have you seen any differences with, so you haven't even really seen any major differences between, um, different, um, you know, different locations because it was interesting. So maybe I would say five months ago, I had an opportunity to sit on a panel. I was the only, I was the only woman on this panel and, um, we were sp uh, meeting with global leaders. Um, mm -hmm. these were, um, the global leaders and there were pilots from different, I mean, different countries. So you had Iraq, you had, um, some, uh, I believe you had Italy, you had Morocco, you had all these again, global leaders, mm -hmm. pilots as well. And they were just on the panel. It was interesting, right? Because again, you have, you've heard cer certain stories about certain areas and certain spaces and you're like, Hmm, I wonder what the experiences of, of women are there. I wonder how they navigate leadership sure. there. I wonder if the women do serve in them. And I'm asking all these questions and I'm, I'm being educated about their experiences and how they see things. And I'm realizing like, well, clearly what I'm seeing on TV is totally incorrect. And that's why I'm such a believer that um, it's important that um, we have conversations that we expand our worldviews. And I'm pretty sure you're learning oh, from yeah. having these conversations with these global leaders. And you're like, oh, wow, you know, I'm learning things. And I'm, I thought that this experience is going to be one way and it's not. Um, but are you seeing any differences? Um, and it sounds like you're not. And I love that you're sharing this because this is educating other people like, you know, emotions are, you know, global, these same pocket of emotions. And also as far as regardless if it's a leader in China, in Asia, in Dubai, they are also navigating the same issue. So um, yeah. are yeah. there and any I, differences you're seeing? I really haven't, honestly. And I, and like I mentioned, just with this one particular project that I'm working on currently, it's been quite fascinating to listen because we have several, <clears throat> excuse me, several interactive pieces where we're really, you know, going through some of the core emotions. I even have a series of slides that I just show. We take our emotional temperature and, um, you know, I have everything from, excuse me, 
Oh, you're fine. That happens to me sometimes. You're like in a flow. Listen, guys, this happens all the time. You know, you'll be in a good flow, in a conversation, and then all of a sudden, you're like, what is going on with my face? And then, you know, you try to talk it through, and you're like, mm, no, it's not working. Yeah. Let me think. One more second. I know exactly what you're dealing with. That's why I'm Thank like, you. I, 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 I feel it because I oh, went good. like a week ago Appreciate and I was like, that. what is this going on? So you're good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'll show like an image of 9-11, you know, and the towers on fire. And then I'll, the, the next image is a kitten, you know, or a guy bungee jumping or, you know, a soccer player in pain. And, you know, it's just this up and down of emotions. And we talk about what were you experiencing, you know? What it, and then it's really interesting to hear people say, Oh, that's not at all what I was experiencing on that image, you know. And so we realize, Oh, we don't all we can sit through the same meeting at work, we can sit, we can have the same conversation, you know, be in the same conversation, but experience it differently because we see it through our own lens, we have our own things that it brings up, we have that our own relationship with that person, and they say something that just rubs us the wrong way. And you know, we have all of our own internal noise, our own biases that <clears throat> impact our communication. So that's been interesting to listen to, to that. But I'd say the emotions are all felt <laughs> by everyone. Um, some a little different, some have experienced things and shared things a little differently, but yeah, it's been pretty universal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I can just imagine, uh, what you, what you've seen, what you've experienced, uh, because again, um, a lot of times when we, um, you know, again, think of different spaces and different places, or again, we have an experience or we see something, we think that, it is uh, supposed to lead to the same experience. Like I do one thing where we talk about reframing um, and someone, um, and at the end of reframing, I would, you know, I always share about, it's what we think about the experience, right? Someone can watch two people, again, you can have a a movie and you can have, again, a a ton of people in the movie and some people might be like, boo, that was the worst movie or that was the worst experience. And you might have someone that says, no, that was great, Mm -hmm. right? That's why I don't really subscribe to, you know, I know they have Rotten Tomatoes and all these rating scales. I will follow ratings for hotels and <laughs> food places. I will. That's the only thing I will follow. But typically for movies, I'm like, OK, I'm a big Marvel fan. A lot of people know that mm-hmm. I'm a big Marvel fan. Me and my kid, that's our thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to yeah, still go. Okay. I'm going to go experience it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing it like I watch Spider-Man and I'm, I'm in my um, I'm finishing my Shout out to me. I'm graduating my master's soon. Yay. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> but um, so in my classes, I'm seeing the same um same individuals in my class classes. So me and this one gentleman always talk about seeing movies. And he was like, Oh yeah, me and my daughter, we went to go see Spider-Man and it was great. And I was like, ah it was okay. Again, it's totally different experience yeah. the way we experienced that. And I love that because it shows. And it proves how, again, how we view, how we experience things are different. And that's why it's important for us to not judge, assume and say, why is this leader or why is this person responding this way? Why we it's just it's just different for everyone. Um, And it's nothing wrong with how they see it. Right. I mean, first, I won't say for some people. I mean, there's certain cases where it might be like "Mm, you have to have empathy there because there are some cases where as a leader, you want to have empathy. You want to show up a certain way, but it ties back to empathy and understanding um, in certain cases where I might not understand, but I need to um, just listen and, and get a perspective so I can um, find a level of connection with you. Yeah. So I, love I think that. if we stay curious exercise. too, mm-hmm. as a leader, yes. if we stay curious and not brush to judge. I think, you know, human nature, we don't, we don't like to say it, but we do. We judge people. <laughs> we, we don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt. And especially now in this cancel culture and social media going rampant and politics and all the stuff, it's just out there, right? And so people have opinions and now they can spew them everywhere <laughs> about all the things and it just heightens the emotion. But if we can pause and stay curious and lean in and listen and learn, and be like, what can I learn from this situation? 
because we can always, there's always something we can learn and grow and do it differently, you know, the next time. And I think that's for me as a leader, when I do screw up and I screw up, you know, I don't do it right. But if I can take that situation, get some feedback from someone and say, how would you have done this differently? And go to someone like you that's got a different behavioral style, different perspective that could give me some feedback that wouldn't be like my girlfriend that's going to be like, oh, girl, you did it right. Like I do exactly the same thing. Like that's not helpful, you know, for me. I'm like, no, no, no. I actually want you to challenge me. I want you to, you know, push back, give me some feedback that might be a different perspective. That's okay. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. I love it. Um, so right before we close, because some people, because I've talked about the disc before, but can you give people a quick run through of the four um, of those behavior styles? So they might be like, what are they saying? D-I-S-D. Yeah, D-I-S-D. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's really how you handle problems and challenges. So that direct communicator, um, you know, people in contacts, I talk about people in contact, that's your high eye, that's your influential person. You love people. You want to influence others to your point of view. The S is more steady, stable. So they're the laid back, kind of relaxed, want more time to process information, make decisions. And then the C, the conscientious or compliant individuals, they're all about the rules. They want to enforce the rules, follow the rules. They love the details and the procedures. Not you, Aisha. I know, not not you. (laughs) But you like information. Like you were talking about reviews. I was like, really? Do you know? Do you really not like read Rotten Tomatoes? <laughs> Maybe you do. Or I'm like, hey, let's just go. Sounds fun. It's a movie. It's about the experience, you know. So we have differences. Yeah. So it's it's really it's how we communicate. That's what DISC is. It's just a language that helps you understand to communicate differently and realize, oh, at times I have to flex. Like I can be all over the place with my high eye and I've got to bring it down listen, because I'm not the best listener. I know that about my style. I have to actually practice that. And I can, I can lean into practicing being really intentional in stretching and growing that piece, you know, of me. So that's what DISC is all about. Just a, a tool that helps people connect and how to communicate. I love it. I love it. And again, it's been transformational. It's really allowed me to understand my tendencies and the blind spots that I have, because Mm -hmm. again, being someone again, as a D and a C I'm task oriented, task focused. And because I was missing that people, um, aspect, people were thinking like, she's so mean, she's so stuck up. She's so, and it was like, no, I really care about you all. I'm just about these problems and these tasks. And just, I want it done a certain way. And they're like, you are no fun. Um, I remember one time we went to do, um, escape room and oh my goodness Stacy you would have thought I was like okay escape room you're supposed to follow the process you f- you find one and listen you yes. find one clue it tells you where to go and everyone's like you know what let's go over here and I'm like no 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 let's figure this one out <laughs> and I had to check my team obviously. building exercise or for your family <laughs> Oh man. And I had to realize I'm like, I'm being such a party pooper right now because they're like, ah, let's go. And I'm like, let's figure this one out first before we move to the next. And they're like, they're just having, they wanted to have fun. Um, My husband's style is exactly your style. And I remember one time he came to me and he said, help me be an eye. Like you just have so much fun. Everything just rolls off your back. And I was like, no, like, I don't want you to be an eye. Like you now in social settings, you can learn how to flex. Like, we don't have to be the first people to leave a party. You know, he's like, we always have a code word. I'm like, I'm sick of having a code word. When we get oh, there's a code word. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. When that word is said, it's time to, you know, leave. And if anyone leaves first, it's his invitation to head out. Oh, like, wow. oh I'm having so much fun. We don't want to leave. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Just oh, that's a code word. Like, yeah, code word. Oh, goodness. I just, get, I just armed you with <laughs> No, no, no. I, 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 and again, I am aware now. So I'm like, okay, I have to tap into that. Cause again, that was the area that I was uh, my blind spot as a leader. Mm-hmm. I would walk in, go into the office and I would crack my door and get into the task. And I had team members that just happened to be high eyes and S's. And I had to work on that area. Or again, it was going to affect 
that mm-hmm. it was affecting the team. It yeah. was affecting productivity. I wasn't connecting. It was important for those people. They wanted connection. Yeah. And if that's what that was something that they preferred or enjoyed or they liked, I had to stop and have a conversation. Hi, how are you doing? Yes. Okay. Even though I'm like, there's 10 emails. But like, get to the point. Right. Circle, what are you, what's the, what do you need from me? Yeah. <laughs> and it was a muscle that I had to build. And yeah. over time, as I built that muscle, I saw the connection and that connection birthed this and it birthed this and now productivity and now we're winning awards and now so on and so on. So it stretched me yeah. and now I can show up for my team in a different way. And that is the power of being self-aware, understanding your blind spots and growing and developing. So I love that because I, I hear this language like I'm just a high eye and I have this and I'm like, but you can work on that. You can yes. develop in that area, right? It's just that yeah. awareness. So yeah, I, I love people, that. Don't use it as a crutch. And don't yes. use it as a weapon. Okay. It's yes. a tool. It's a tool to learn how to communicate. And it is all about flexing. Like my husband was like, no, I don't want you to be an I. Like, I love that you do our taxes and that you, you know, <laughs> like you, there's amazing things that you bring to the table, even for our business. You know, you're, it's yeah. amazing what you do. And I, I don't want to read those contracts. I don't want to do all that. You know, those are details that just like my eyes glaze over, please, you know, don't make me do it. <laughs> where he loves it, you know, I don't know if he loves it, but he does it. And it's with excellence, you know, where, so learning your strengths and then partnering with team members that really do fill those gaps can be so powerful in organizations and families um, to be able to communicate more effectively, but it is self-awareness is where it all starts. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, that was a hack there too, because again, family is this, this also applies in the family again, community space, because by understanding that this has been utilized for couples and they're like, no wonder you're so you read all those reviews. Listen, I will take forever just to book a hotel. Cause I'm looking at five <laughs> websites. I'm wanting to get the best deal. I want to check this. And by the time I get to this other website, for some reason it's refreshed. And now it went from 150 <laughs> to 550. It's bananas, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> it's nuts. But trust me, by the time I'm going to have everything together, you're going to be like, how did you find this you know what it's that it's that yeah. c it's all that that's you know or there's a problem exactly. people call this is how you're going to fix it you're going to yep. do this you're going to do this you're going to do that you're going to do this right well, and so you can think i love three you steps said. ahead you can think through all of that where the eyes are just like what you know get right in the middle of all the issues but no my husband <laughs> plans all of our travel and i'm like let's go on vacation He's like oh. Because he does all the research and I just show up. I'm like, this is is fabulous. What do you mean? It's, you know, so. And again, it is such a hack. And that's why um, showing up authentically who you are, Mm -hmm. understanding who you are and Again, this is your strength. This is your gift. This is what you're good at. And working and collaborating is so powerful. So you can can use it for, again, those lovers, those spouses, please, please, please utilize this tool. So as we close, I want to ask you a couple questions real quick. Okay. So what did the worst leader teach you? Oh, gosh. You know, I've worked with some really bad leaders and, um, I mean, honestly, I did learn. It was like, don't do that. Don't, don't do that ever. Um, So I learned some things of what not to do because I've seen leaders that just don't value people. Um, They don't include people. They don't trust. They don't build um, a culture of, you know, honor and respect. And so I think that's what I learned the most is what not to do. Seeing some things that were horrific. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Oh my goodness. (laughs) flashbacks thinking about yeah <laughs> what did the best leader teach you and yeah. I think we got a glimpse of that person earlier but what did the best leader teach you yeah well I think about my mentor um you know I mean he honestly saw so much in me that I wasn't even aware of 30 years ago and he began to train me trust me um include me really stretch me in ways that um I didn't expect and so I think through that collaboration, through that trust, that respect that we had. I mean, here I am, you know, 30 years later owning the company. And so that was something I think he was great at asking for feedback as well. That was something he modeled all the time. 
Um, he would always say, you know, what is it about me that drives you absolutely crazy? I was like, really? You really want to know? Um, but there were, he did. He really was growing. All He was always on it. I mean, open to feedback and giving honest feedback as well. So that was another thing that I really learned from him. I love it. Um, what advice would you give seasoned leaders, right? I call, I, I put them in pockets, like the generation of the now and the generation of the future. Yeah. Um, so what would you tell seasoned leaders um, in supporting Gen Zers, um, younger leaders? Um, you know, there have been studies out there that say that Gen Zers, they're navigating a level of ageism, workplace abuse, mm-hmm. and they're really struggling. There's high turnover that happens with that generation. So what advice, because you work with some awesome uh, young leaders, um, I do. And it, yeah. It's it's great to see that you're able to collaborate and develop them. Yeah, no, I worked for an organization or I work with an organization. I've been with them for about 10 years. And I noticed that they were going through a lot of turnover. And when I realized what they were doing, if you on your resume had more than four jobs within an X number of time frame, you went into a different pile. And I was like, you're missing out on a huge talent pool here. And it was this younger generation who were going through many jobs. And that's just culturally, it's different than, you know, my generation X, the baby boomer, you know, they were like these long-term loyal, all the things. And so that's one thing, be open (laughs) to share your knowledge with the younger generation. Don't feel like you've arrived because I think we can all learn from each other. I mean, we've got a ton of knowledge to share, but things are different. I mean, this is a different space um, than it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. So be open to learn, but then also to share that knowledge with the younger generation that you do have and carry and bring. Yeah. I love that. And that's true. I mean, what they're seeing, what they're exposed to, the way that they see um, the world. I mean, again, I I shared an article on one of my episodes about, you know, you have a generation that watched their parents navigate the workplace. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it really talked about how they were like, I'm not going to do it that way. I saw the, the long hours they worked. I saw what happened during the Great Recession. I saw how they sacrificed. I am going to take charge Mm -hmm. and navigate the workplace differently. So it's like, listen, I don't like it here, or I don't like how things are working, or they're not supporting me in this way. I'm leaving. I'm not going to be loyal to an organization that isn't, you know, yeah. um, meeting these targets. Right. So they'll leave. Um, and some organizations are like, I don't like that. Or certainly, you know, again, they have like the stigma. Um, and I love that you are doing that because you're again, reshaping the perspective and recognizing they can't think like you yeah. or see the world like you because they see, they have seen the world in a different mm-hmm. lens. And this is why. Yeah. And now let's take that information again, build that bridge. Um, mm-hmm. so we can utilize the, those talents so we can, again, cause they're going to be, again, your future clients, customers, Definitely. leaders are going to be those individuals. Yeah. Right. So use their information. Um, I'm going to say use it, but you know, collaborate and partner and, um, tap into that information. So now you can be that organization that lasts into the future. Um, And I'm going to throw a bonus question, right? Because again, 30 years, 30 years of this great knowledge. What, um, from again, that, that entire time that you have just, again, just been just doing amazing things in supporting organizations and leaders globally. Um, what would you say? I don't know. The, the, I won't say the biggest lesson, but I will say the biggest lesson. <laughs> what, would, what would be one thing that you would say that, you know, has helped you stay mm-hmm. in this space for 30 years? Like, okay, one thing that in order for me to stay in this space for as long as I have and mm-hmm. be, you know, be effective, um, I needed to blank in yeah. order for me to still make impact. Well, I love helping people. I love helping people step into their calling, kind of into their destiny, kind of calling out the gold inside of people. And so I think that has been something that's been beautiful for me over 30 years of just learning, growing myself, but then being able to work with some amazing things. And so I think as long as I see people with those aha moments of yeah, I could do it differently. That that is what it's all about for me. When I see those the light bulbs go off and they can immediately apply. So I don't want to just give knowledge. I want them to be able to use it and apply it. So all of my training is super actionable, very applicable. 
And when I see all those dots connecting, that's when I know that, you know, they're getting it and they're going to be able to do something with it. This isn't just the flavor of the month or the latest, you know, training that I have to do. This is something that I really want to do. And so when I see that piece, I think for me, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I love it. So it's it's hard work, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm a big believer in it. It's not about the check. Um, I had an interview with um, someone earlier and they asked that question, like, why do you do it? Or what advice would you give someone who started a business? Um, I would, um, you know, what kind of conversation would you have? And I was at, I would ask them, why do they do it? I said, if, if it's about the money, they're in it for the wrong reason. Because of course, in business, you have ebbs and flows, ups and downs in certain seasons. And if you're solely in it because of the money, if you're leading but because of the money, then, you know, as soon as you see like that one month where maybe you didn't hit that target, you know, are you going to show up for that customer, that client that needs that growth, that development, that tool, that resource, that product, that service the same way, you know, and if it's not from, if it's not intrinsic, if it's not from the heart, if it's not because you want to see that impact, then you're in it for the wrong reason. But if you're there for impact, if you're there for transformation, it's not going to feel like work. And trust me, the, you know, finances will come because again, you're there for the transformation. So are you in it for the transformation leaders? What are you doing it for? Because if you're doing it for the parking spot, for the, you know, nice seat, right? The, the, that plaque that says CEO or whatever, you're in it for the wrong reason. And that's why I'm always challenging you all to think of why you lead because you chose the role of leader, but why did you do it? All right. And as I always say, individuals don't typically quit the organization. They typically quit the leader. That's why you need leadership development. So where can people find you? Where can people yes. learn about you? I know, listen, your Instagram page at help for leaders, go check it out. Some awesome, awesome, really cool um, reels on there, but where else can people find you? And yes. You? So obviously, yeah, Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, LinkedIn, leadership resources and consulting. Um, our website is disc-report.com. Com. And all of our contact information is on all those places. I also have a YouTube channel. Um, it's Help for Leaders. So you can go see the podcast. I have a podcast as well called Help for Leaders. It's on all podcasting platforms and all of our contact information is there too. So yeah, lots of places. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And it will also be in the show notes. So if you need that information, please look below, right? It's in the show notes. Um, right. And please connect with Stacy and get those disc reports. Again, this extends beyond just leading within organizations. It also extends in the household as well. So thank you again. I'm so honored that you took your time um, to connect with me and share your wisdom and knowledge. I'm so honored and grateful um, for, again, people like you who are taking this work seriously and making an impact. Like it really does mean something to me because I don't connect or, or care. I don't say care. Okay. That's the wrong word. But when I see individuals who aren't truly in this for the hard work, it bothers me because it's about the transformation. Um, but again, I just see the love. I see the passion with what you do and to do it for 30 years and do it with excellence and with faith. I, I just appreciate it. So thank you so much for your time and you be blessed. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed this conversation. <laughs> thank you so much. And you all appreciate you, of course, like subscribe, leave a review, connect with Stacy. appreciate you all. Um, and make sure you share this with a leader that needs this information because we talked about so many different things and make sure that you advocate and you promote and push, Hey, manager, leader, CEO, get these tools and resources in your organization. You all have a great day and we'll see you all next week. Bye.